this week you'll be joining us on our overnight sailing journey from Tunisia to Malta, where Jace catches his biggest fish yet. Come on, I know I'm close now. Our fluffy new crew members experience their first sail. They have been going mental out here. And we come across what we believe is a refugee boat, empty and floating out in the middle of the ocean. But before we set sail, we have an exciting new product to share with you that's about to revolutionise the way you experience living aboard a sailboat. So we're coming to you in real time today. We, about a month ago, received this really cool Bluetti portable power station. We want to tell you the story of how everything went down before we tell you about all the features. We went into a marina to pick this baby up. Got our package. Got the goods. See on the side there? What it is. <laughs> what is that, you ask? Well, you're about to find out. When we left the marina the next day, we had a bunch of stuff that we wanted to charge up before we took the shore power out. Anyway, we left too much load on our batteries and our inverter when we took the shore power out. And believe it or not, we actually blew our inverter. Or so we thought we blew our inverter. I think we've just blown up our inverter. At the time we were going through the European heat wave, it just started like around the same day. It is day one of having Blue Eddy <laughs> since we picked it up yesterday. And we're already using it because somehow the inverter uh, isn't turning on. The power has been tripped when we've pulled the plug out at the marina and it is like 40 degrees here. So we've already got it out to put the van on while Jason looks in the manual for the inverter. Our inverter's already in the boat to try and get it working. So yeah, it turns out this thing is handier than we thought. The cats were panting. We were just in the water 24 seven. Um, and we were just thinking this thing honestly saved us because we wouldn't have had any AC power um, if we didn't have this, which means we couldn't run any of our fans. We also couldn't run our water maker without our AC power because our water maker runs off our generator and our AC power. We also can't charge our laptops or any of our other devices like cameras or anything like that without AC power. So we would have been stuck. We wouldn't have been able to post episodes. So this thing honestly was a lifesaver. The timing was just insane for it as well. Yeah, we want to show you guys how we've been using it, what all the features are. Yeah. So this is a Bluetti AC200 Max portable power station. So it has a 2048 watt hour lithium battery built in and also a 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter. And basically all of the inputs and outputs you would ever need. So we've got four AC output ports here. So these are your normal standard AC plugs that go into this. Um, it can handle 220 to 240 AC at 2200 watts. You've got your standard USB ports. So you've got two USB ports in here. You've got your 18 watt USB. You've got a 100 watt USB-C. So the 100 watts, that can charge today's laptop just straight from this. She's got a MacBook Pro. Straight into there, charge, no worries. You've got your 12 volt DC in here. So 12 volt DC, 10 amp, and then your cigarette lighter, 12 volt DC, 10 amp. And this one is for an RV. So this is a 30 amp, 12 volt DC. Yeah, so that's all the ports on the front side. We've got two wireless charging outputs on top, 15 watts, which is really cool. Just adds like another element to this, just to make it even, even cooler than what it, what it was beforehand. So yeah, you can just pop your phones up on top here, which is really cool. So if you've got it at the beach or somewhere, because you can take this wherever you want. You can just sit your phones up on the top. Yeah. So you've got seven different ways you can charge the Blue Eddy. Our main one's the solar, but you can charge it through AC, you can charge it through DC, so your 12 volt socket, and you can also charge it through solar and AC. So you can get a max output of 1400 watts. So you could charge this device 2000 watt hours in an hour and a half, which is crazy. And I just want to put in perspective how powerful this device actually is. So this is 2048 watt hours of life here for batteries, which means you can basically use 100% of this battery. On our boat, we have three AGM 110 amp hour batteries, which we can only use half of 
because they're AGMs, so you can't drain it the full way. Um, so what that means is that works out to be about 1960 watt hours of power. So this has more power than all our batteries on our boat. So the AC200 Max has a new MPPT charge controller inside it, which can handle up to 900 watts of solar. We currently have 600 watts of solar going into it, but we can run really heavy appliances on this that we'd have to use the generator beforehand. We can run our water maker for two and a half hours, which produces well more than enough water that we need for the day. We can run our hot water directly off this. All right, we'll take you downstairs and run it with a bit of power inside it. Oh yeah, so the weight of this is 28 kilos. One of our 110 amp hour Victron AGMs is 32 kilos. So this is four kilos lighter than one, and we've got three AGMs. So if you think about it weight wise, it is a third of the weight. And it's got the inverter built in, so it's yeah. pretty cool. So this is the side profile of the Blue Eddy. These two ports here, you can actually connect two expansion batteries to this. So instead of it being 2,040 watt hours, you can get up to over 8,000 watt hours if you're connecting the Blue Eddy expansion batteries up to this, which is a crazy amount of power. Like you could, you could power a home with that. This input here is to charge the Blue Eddy through solar. You could also charge it through DC, through this port. And then this input here, it's to charge it through AC. So just your basic AC cord goes in to the AC plug and then this side plugs into here. And then that charges it at 500 watts an hour. So if you were just singly alone charging it with the adapter, with the AC, it would take you four hours to charge it. You can also charge it with the AC power and then the solar power. So we've got solar currently running through this at the moment. So we could plug this in right now and we'd have our 600 watts of solar charging it plus our AC if we had a generator going right now. So we currently have 1100 watts charging it. So it would charge in less than two hours. We've just turned it on. We've got the solar running through it. It's got a nice little screen here that tells you everything you need to know, all the basics. So we've got 500 watts of solar currently coming into it. it gives you your charge. It gives you your DC load in watts. It gives you the AC load, so that's what's coming out. And then this is your load coming in for, through the AC. So we've got obviously nothing coming in through the AC. We've got no load coming out. You can turn your AC outputs on and off from this screen and your DC outputs on and off. But what we use that's even cooler than the screen is an app on your phone. So you've got a Blue Eddy app, gives you real time updates of what's coming in. We've got, you know, our solar coming in. We've got 500 and something watts of solar coming in. That's your AC coming in. And then you can also control your DC and AC straight from the phone here. So we can flick our AC on from here. We've got fans plugged in at the moment. So our fans are just gonna turn straight on. How cool. We've hooked up the AC power from our boat to that inverter right now. So we're just gonna put a bit of load on it just to test it out. So the best thing to load up for us is our water maker. Um, so we're just gonna give it a quick run. This is what turns salt water into fresh water. So we can run this. 500 watts coming in and 595 watts coming out. So yeah, the Blue Eddy got us out of some serious strife. Like we just thought we'd have to go from marina to marina just to get water and we can just use this thing. It's just, it's, it's honestly amazing. So obviously we've been using this basically as our main battery system, but you don't have to use it like that. Um, we got this to basically be a backup. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It's just because coincidentally we had this happen at the same time. Um, so yeah, this would be great for anyone living on a boat, in an RV, even in your house if you want to, um, as a backup power system. But we've also now just proven that you can use it as your standalone battery system if you want to, especially with the expandable battery packs as well. So yeah, if you guys want to check it out, we'll leave a link in the description where you can read all about it, um, read the features and see what it's about. All right, we're all checked out and en route to Malta. It was a bit of a mad rush to get everything done in time, so we didn't really feel much. Um, Checkout went smoothly and yeah, we're on our way. Um, at the moment we've got like 20 knots upwind, so 
Not ideal conditions right out of the gate, especially with two new kittens. Oh, and by the way, we introduced to you Nala and Lulu. Nala, the poor little thing, has been sick at least once. I'm not sure whose the other one was and someone's also pooed because I put the tray in the bathroom and I ended up shutting the door. Anyway, I put a blanket down on the floor for them and they're um, sleeping on that at the moment. But yeah, when we get to Malta, we'll try and figure out like a better little situation for them. Um, I've had to put the lids on their bowls of food and everything so it doesn't go everywhere. Um, so yeah, we'll try and find some bowls that like grip to the floor and everything as well. So we can always have their food open, not really their water. Um, but yeah, poor little things. I'm a little bit worried about Nala. I hope she's gonna be okay. Lulu seems to be taking it a little bit better. She's just meowing a lot and wants to kind of sit on you. But um, yeah, we've got some pizza for lunch. We bought some before we left, takeaway. Um, the one thing that we've really noticed that they do in Tunisia is they just put seafood on everything. So it doesn't say anything to do with seafood on the actual menu um, for whatever you're getting. But I've had prawns put on top of my chicken that I ordered. We've had tuna put on this pizza that we ordered that both didn't say they had seafood. And our friend James also had tuna put on top of his pasta. So it's like they just throw it on everything. <laughs> Good. Uh, feels like we're literally sailing on someone else's boat right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got like a few new sail UV strip for the head sail. Our old sail head sail used to curl at the very end, and um, this UV strip has helped it from prevented it from curling. Obviously, we fixed the leech line too, but honestly, just it feels amazing. I, I just, like. I keep looking at our boat, I'm like, this is not ours, surely. <laughs> like in disbelief. It's good. We've got about 20 knots of wind. Sailing tight, 30 degrees. This is probably the best sail we've had upwind in a, in a very long time. Got the beautiful sunset. Everything seems to be working perfectly. <laughs> Don't jinx us. Yeah, I'm gonna jinx us. The wind's dying off, so we're most likely gonna to have to motor through the night, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing at all for an overnight passage. Yeah, it's, it's okay. We'll just go slow, four or five knots, 1800 revs. Just cruise. Oh, I could be half naked again. It's so hard to be in Tunisia in like 30 odd degrees wearing long pants and a t-shirt and like I barely own anything really like that that's not winter clothes so I was dying yeah making up for lost time it's 37 degrees today but we've got wind so it, it's like perfect I'm not hot but I'm not cold it's so nice yeah couldn't ask for too much better conditions than this and look at the sunset. And look at that new arch. Oh! We rigged up a basic pulley system to get us to Malta, where we could find the correct accessories we need. We just rigged up a line going from the arch cleat through a single block to a spring hook which was then hooked onto an alpine butterfly knot on another line, going to two holding points on the tender. We did this on either side of the davits. Plus, we also tied lines on either side of the tender to prevent it swinging side to side in the swell and hold it snug to the stern. What do you reckon of it? Well, it's doing well so far. So far, so good. We um, had to kind of do like a little makeshift system, didn't we? Really, so. Yeah just with what we had on the boat because yeah. they don't sell anything like that in Tunisia. Yeah, so we'll, when we get to Malta or when we can afford it because we're broke, um, we'll sort out a better system for it and test out what works the best, I guess, with how far to bring up the tender and everything. So 
Yeah, but oh man, how much easier is that than having to pull up the motor yeah. on the back here and then the tender on deck. So two separate things and like, it's so sketchy with that motor. Yeah. Yeah, it was so much easier just to put, and we were, we were doing it in swell in 20 knots of wind. Yeah. And we, we got it up on there quite easy, which we'd never be able to do that beforehand. As the vast expanse of the ocean stretches before us, we unexpectedly come across a haunting sight that speaks volumes of the struggles faced by those seeking safety and a better life. What we believe was an empty refugee boat, once filled by those who have braved the treacherous waters in search of hope and refuge. It was really sad to see and eerie. We were just hoping whoever were in it were rescued. nautical miles into our sail. <laughs> no, let's just take a time out of the bowl. This is really helping us out. The kittens are feeling better. Oh, Nala's jumped up on the bench. She, yeah, she's eating out of the bowl. Nala. <laughs> Come on. Lulu, you're missing out, love. What are you doing? Today has woken me up for my shifts. Um, it's about four o'clock in the morning and it is so calm out there. It is, it's literally like a lake. Uh, can't complain about that. Like obviously we're motoring, but night conditions, you don't want to be, you don't want to have anything too hairy. But yeah, it's been an amazing passage so far. I hope it stays like this. We are maybe six nautical miles away from the closest point of Lanosa, which is a small Italian island in between basically right in the middle of here and Sicily. Can't quite get that, but that's Lanosa just there. What do you think you're doing, Lulu? Hey? Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? You think you're allowed up there? This is what we've got going on this morning. Two girls on watch. You guys happy? You left that sad country that don't treat pets well. She always comes up and gives you a cuddle in the morning. Hello. Oh, see ya. Do you have a good sleep? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. You can duck off again if you want. Sugar syrup, 
um, and then normally water and a little bit of little lime squeeze in it. But we bought this juice, it's called Mojito and it's lime and mint. So I put half that and half water and then didn't do the lime. So yeah, we'll see what it tastes like. Yum. So nice. It's what? a hot summer's day. What's you cooking? And we're making, this is, I meal prepped this. They're probably ready. Little, I made a bit of a mess. Oh, that's this is the crumbs on the bottom. <laughs> um, just like little egg frittatas. So it's literally just egg whisked with a bunch of vegetables. So like carrot, peas, spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, olives, crumbs and cheese. on and it's huge he said he could see it out there somewhere is that what you said I should move the cushions out of the way eh? okay Probably the biggest tuna I've caught. Probably, it is. What do you mean, probably? Oh man. It's massive. It's like the size of a freaking baby shark. It put up a really good fight, like a serious fight. Is it a he or a she? She, maybe. Oh, oh. Right, way in time. Uh, eight and a half. That is insane. We're about three to four hours away. Getting close now. I am toasted because my skin hasn't really seen the sun this year yet. And Jason was busy filleting his fish and the sunscreen was back here and it's just too hard to grab. So yeah, I'm gonna be toasted. Oops, hopefully I go around quickly and don't get too sore. Um, yeah, it's been such a nice passage. I was like pretty nervous about this one because um, way here the swell was really big we were lucky that we we're going downwind um however straight out of the gates yesterday we were sailing upwind wasn't meant to be as strong um as what it was but yeah once it got dark it settled right down and uh, we had to motor all through the night and might be losing wind now I'm getting it a swell so on the side so sails are flapping um yeah, we had to motor all through the night and up until about 12, 11 or 12 today and then we were able to start sailing again. So yeah, it's been really nice conditions. I prefer to motor um, than to have rough conditions along this stretch of sea because it's very open. I don't know, the swell can get really big. Um, yeah, so can't complain. So excited to get back to Malta. Excited to just be able to wear what I want to wear, not have to cover up completely, um, be able to go get a drink somewhere that's not beer, um, like an alcoholic drink, because pretty much there's only a few places inside the marina that served alcohol, and it was basically only beer, um, which I don't drink, so yeah, keen as, and keen to jump in the ocean, find a nice clear spot and just hang out, and finally enjoy the start of summer. I just randomly looked out because I've been talking on the phone to mum and boom there's just these massive cliffs but yeah it's quite smoky and hazy around it so no wonder we couldn't see it like we're pretty damn close now and to the naked eye it's kind of hard to see still so excited to drop the hook not long now Right, 
we're just about to check out the first anchorage that we want to go to. Um, it's a very narrow anchorage, so fingers crossed there's a spot for us. Um, and we might have to tie stern to, to I guess, make room. Um, I guess we'll just see what everyone else is doing and figure it out from there. So yeah, fingers crossed. Meanwhile, this one's freaking out, wanting to come outside. You have to wait, darlings. Now you're gonna be stuck like that. This is our anchorage, very tight. So we're trying to, we definitely have to stand to. What everyone else is doing except for this motorboat. We've arrived, stand to. Jason's just dived to check the anchor. We've uh, tied off our two lines, but we still need to set them perfectly. And yeah, it's a little bit awkward with the tender at the back. Girls are checking out the new new spot for the night. <laughs> Freshly made sashimi. Thank you very much. Today I got a sauce up. Looks amazing. It's good, really good. Sesame seeds. Jalapenos. Pickled jalapenos, yeah. Pickled jalapenos, soy sauce. <laughs> jalapenos. Jalapenos. <laughs> lime. What else was in there? Sesame oil. Sesame oil. Ginger powder because we don't have real ginger. ginger. Yeah. But it's really, really nice. So good. We can't wait to unveil the hidden gems of this captivating archipelago that is Malta, nestled in the heart of the Mediterranean Sea. We'll see you next week for an unforgettable experience that will surely leave you falling in love with Malta, just as we have.